Hello, hello, my colorista nasties. Welcome back to another color and chat. Today, we are, of course, going to be coloring in Tropagoth. She's the new girl. She's the new girl in the room, so she's going to be getting some love for the next few weeks, couple of months, possibly until I move on to another book. But the season is so appropriate. It is summer, and she's actually going to be carrying us into spooky season as well because duh goth and the whole tropical thing tropical is year-round as far as I'm concerned because you know I'm a tiki person but uh, yeah we are going to be coloring in this book today I am sitting down to color uh, at midnight because I have been running my air conditioner all day long and I do not like to have that in the background of all of my videos it's the summer. If you've been here, you know how I do things. Uh, summertime, typically, if I'm not doing a voiceover video, I will wait until late in the evening to film so that I can turn my air conditioner off as I am filming. Yes, the claws are temporarily gone. It is that time of year. Um, I fluctuate between having naturally long claws and fake ones. I allow the natural ones to grow out once or twice a year and then once those nails break I just chop them all off and start putting the fake ones back on and right now we are in the regrowth phase where I'm giving my hands a couple of weeks of breathing room without being covered in claws so yeah that's where those are but they will be returning. This is the page that we are going to be coloring in today. I have pre-selected the colors already. It was between this page and another one, but I, I'm just I'm just in the mood. I was working on Coco Naughty today. I was uh, fiddling around on the website and she's drinking out of a coconut, so it was appropriate because Coco Naughty, coconut, see? Yeah, you get it. I am just fully, fully in midnight coloring mode. It is just so nice right now. I have uh, a, an ancient air conditioner that is very loud and having that on all day as a white noise is just annoying and now it's just dead silent with the exception of the resident gremlin. He's over here eating. If you hear little chewies, that's what's going on. It's just me, a glass of fresh cold mineral water and silence. One of my night birds is going to start singing probably, hopefully, but it's been really hot so the birds have been quiet. I don't know. I'm hoping for a little serenade though, but if not, that's okay. I am going to be coloring this page over the course of several nights, so there's going to be, you know, just a lot of discrepancies in lighting. You might see my nails change. I don't know, but it's just that. It's that sort of situation. We're just going to relax and color, and the colors that I have chosen is what I was playing with. I'm feeling uh, that they almost lean, I'm, okay, duh, this book is tropical spooky, tropagoth. It does lean a little darker, but I'm feeling as though they, they're, they're leaning, yes, darker tropical, but also almost autumnal in a way, which I like, but I don't want this page to be dark uh, per se. Oops, weird cut, I got distracted by something. So I do not want this page to be dark necessarily. Oh my God, it's so hot. I'm applying lip balm. <laughs> Even the lip balm is a little, it's getting a little squishy juicy in there because it's, uh, it's warm and it's a beeswax. Okay, so I don't want this to be too dark. I do, the background I'm wanting it to be a bright orange and I don't know how this marker is going to fare on this paper. Let's check it out. See, that's a little too dark. I am going to seek out a brighter orange. Oh, let me do this off camera. Well, this is surprising, almost disappointing to be honest. I don't seem to have a bright orange and I don't need uh, a fluorescent orange. Well, my fluorescent orange is dead right now. It's in my dead marker pile. I still have not purchased refills for it, but uh, I don't have just a nice bright tangerine orange. I must have killed it a long time ago. Well, shoot, that's another thing I have to put on the list to buy, isn't it? <sighs> and I, I don't like to use water-based markers in these books necessarily, so, uh, well, I guess we're just gonna have to wing it then. And I just realized on this page that there's no clear delineation on where the, the foreground begins. 
So we're just gonna we're just gonna add a little arbitrary line here, and that's where we're going to divide the page. And we are going to, I suppose, play with this yellow. This intro is very long, isn't it? I had gotten into the habit of um, laying down the base colors for, you know what? Screw it. We're gonna use the, the marker that I had pulled out initially. We're gonna go ahead and do this one. And if it's a little bit darker than I wanted, well, cry me a river. We're just gonna, we're just gonna go for it. How's everyone doing? What are you coloring in? When you are watching this video, what are you doing? Let me know. I know it's kind of weird, dorky of me to say this, but I like knowing what people are doing when they watch my videos. <laughs> it's because, you know, I, I just speak from personal experience because when I'm watching, admittedly I don't watch a lot of YouTubers, but I do watch a ton of documentaries. Uh, what else do I watch today? Today I was actually watching a couple of documentaries on Bronze Age fashion, hairstyles, jewelry, that sort of thing. I am fascinated by Bronze Age fashion and jewelry. The jewelry, European Bronze Age, just incredible. The fashion it was just, well, certain, we won't get into fashion talk today, but just certain outfits are just oh, incredible. It's Bronze Age. They did the jewelry right. It was big, it was bold, it was fabulous. You know I'm all about that. So all of that to say that when I'm watching documentaries, I'm either working on artwork or if it's something that I can listen to, then nine times out of 10, I'm cleaning or reorganizing. <laughs> so I just like to know, hey, what are you doing when you're watching? Are you actually sitting down and coloring with me or are you cleaning? Are you dyeing your hair, painting your toenails? Let me know, let me know. Just curious. You guys love friggin' Tropagoth, my goodness. This book, I think, I'm not sure if it's the subject matter, the timing, or a combination of both. But I feel as though I have not had a book that had so much positive reception from the jump as this one. But maybe I maybe it is a combination of everything. It's the whole fact that they're my spooky girls, but it's summertime and everybody's in summer mode. And so it's, we've got that tropical thing going and then we've got that kitschy, fabulous tiki thing happening. There's definitely a touch of tiki in this, but more than just a touch of tiki in this book. So I don't know. And I know that in not all countries, it's not necessarily summertime right now, but, or at least the way that we feel it here in uh, North America. So I just, I don't know. I, I, I love it. It made me happy because I, as you all know, I do what I want. <laughs> I release whatever I feel like it, whenever I feel like it, and I just create what I like. And in this instance, you know, I mean, this book is totally me. The only thing missing from this book that could possibly make it any more me would be the inclusion of Art Deco and 1980s themed. We could even combine the two into a 1980s Art Deco revival. I didn't put a whole lot of that. There's like the teeniest, teeniest touch of it, but not very much. I think that would have been a bit too... Incongruous had I done that. I could have, but I just, I wanted to keep this theme pretty easy to digest because it is something different. You know, it's spooky, it's tropical. That's not something that you see very often. Although, uh, it was brought to my attention last year, and I actually found out about this at the Tiki Bar, that there, because I'll explain. There at the Tiki Bar, there was a jack-o'-lantern, a candle holder, or I, I don't know if it was a candle holder or an LED light. I think it was an LED candle inside, whatever. It was a, a golden pineapple, or there were, no, there were little white ones, and then there was a, a large gold one. They were carved jack-o'-lantern style. They were ceramic, but they were carved jack-o'-lantern style. 
and it, I mean, they were pineapples. So there was like a tropical spooky thing going on at the, I was told that those particular ones were purchased at Home Goods by uh, the owner of the bar. So uh, there's, there's a thing, there was a, there was a tropical theme going on and apparently Target had some spooky fruit, like summertime fruit, I don't know. So I thought, huh, the rest of the world is picking up on the fact that we spookies exist year round and we like our spookiness year round to some degree. And wouldn't you know it, wouldn't you know it, wouldn't you know it, the marker is dying. But in defense of this marker, these markers are over 10 years old. Right? 10 years old maybe? Over 10? They're, they're ancient. I've had these markers for many, many, many years. I graduated straight from Crayolas to Prismacolors. I did not want to mess with anything else that was mediocre. I said, nope. I love markers. I'm okay at them and uh, I want fancy markers. So I graduated to, well back, back then, Prismacolors were the fancy marker, but there's so many markers now. But these were the, the industry standard way back, why say way back when, as if it was 50 years ago. But I mean, now there are so many other alcohol markers on the market that are just as good. But uh, yeah, this markers it's old, it's old, and it's it's fair. It's fair that it's ready to it's ready to call it a day. Ooh, my throat is dry. It's so hot today. I almost want to do a two tone kind of ombre background. You know what? No, today now am I actually going to follow through? I don't know, but. I am in the mood to do more of a of a flat color without a ton of blending because I enjoy that look and for someone who enjoys that look so 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 much for whatever reason my mind will not allow me to do it often I, I just I start veering into other things but there is a page and you know what right now that I'm you know what I think Subconsciously, I must have had that page in mind. I will insert a picture of it. It's a page from my coloring book, Hot Tropics, and it's a girl who's sipping out of a tiki mug. Goes, Is it the same pose? She's flipped. Almost. It's, it's almost the same idea. I subconsciously inspired myself. Hey, sometimes you have to be your own inspiration, and that page uh, was, I, I tried a bit of a flat color, and you know what, are we gonna do similar colors actually? Shoot. Off the top of my head, I can't, I, I can see the image, it's fuzzy in my brain, but without having the book in front of me, I can't really reference it. I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna do it. I'm gonna color however I want to, and we'll see how close I was. Of course, by now you've already seen it because she was floating around on screen. But I think it's going to be fairly similar. But that's okay. I colored that one a long time ago. Okay, we're going to give this color a rest. And let's move on. This marker is equally as old. So it is likely on its way out as well. I want to do green foliage. How about we do, it looks as though she's sitting on grass. Let's do the grass pink, shall we? Fuchsia, magenta, whatever it is. With dark. Ooh, this page is going to be much darker than I had anticipated, but she is definitely going the the autumnal route. And I'm, I'm not mad at it, I'm not mad at it, but we'll see, we'll see what happens in the end. I think I might be, again, just 
influenced by my environment because I'm testing a new fragrance for white bat wax. If you are unaware, I quietly launched a new little shop. Well, I have a shop on Etsy and then I also sell it through my online store, but I launched a wax melt line. Eventually I will be selling candles, but I'm starting with wax melts. And uh, before anybody jumps on me about Etsy, Carla, I thought you were leaving Etsy. I've talked about this and I've said it multiple times, but just to reiterate, I don't think Etsy is terrible if you are selling goods that are easily reproducible, such as uh, wax melts, candles, uh, what else can you reproduce? Patterns, if you are a knitter and you make hats, scarves, things of that nature. Things that are not one of a kind necessarily, I think Etsy's fine for. So that's why I opted to open an Etsy shop for the wax. And also I, I like to use Etsy as a funnel to send people to my website. So anyway, I am testing a new scent and it is heavy on the darker berries and so I think this is why maybe my my is this yeah this is actually called mulberry I'm not big on juicy berry scents such as uh, strawberry I love strawberries and I love the scent of them but sweet bright juicy fruity berry scents not huge on those but when they are darker such as currants or blackberries, dark raspberries, things like that. I do enjoy them. And so I'm playing with a fragrance right now. It's not on theme, but I feel as though it's making me go towards a theme. Uh, is I won't talk about it because the scent is still a secret until I perfect it. It's almost perfected. I blend my fragrances. So I like to play with a few different combinations before I, I put the scent out there. And it does smell a bit purple, for lack of a better word, and so I think um, I think that is is helping to inspire my color choice as well today. I like that. I just am I going overboard? Am I obsessive in my pursuit of escapism and immersion? Maybe, but now I mean hell. Now I can scent my own damn air the way that I want to. I still love incense. Don't get me wrong. I love incense. I will love it forever, but being able to make my own wax melt is just crazy. I was like, why did I never think of it? Why? Why did I never think to do that before? I don't know, but I didn't. But baby, now she has, and I'm excited about it. So if you are interested, if you are curious, check them out. Oh my gosh, I'm just trying. I'm trying so desperately to make sure that this marker makes it. I can rejuice it. This one will definitely come to life a little bit if I rejuice it. It could benefit from a rejuice, so that's okay. We're not panicking. I mean, I never panic. When, when have you, when? When have you ever seen me panic over a mistake or a marker dying? Do I get annoyed? Yeah, but you've never seen me in a tizzy over it. It's just coloring. It is just coloring. There's no need to crack your skull open over mistakes and dead markers. I always tell you, use my books as an opportunity to screw around. Because I know, I know there are perfectionist coloristas out there who have taken my advice and I see your posts and I see your work and you create wonderful masterpieces in other people's coloring books but the energy that you have in my books and the energy in your captions is wildly different and it just makes me smile because you always say and this is generally speaking but people who do this generally will say something to the effect of Oh, I love Carla's books. I can just go as wild as I want. I can just lose all my inhibitions and just color however the hell I want without worry. And I love that. Ugh, I'm doing my job. I'm doing my job as a coloring book creator. Because it's one thing to create coloring books, right? But it's, it's another thing to hope that my audience can take from them 
that playfulness and I, oh that just that right there you know you're doing something right you know I like that I like that I appreciate you. I appreciate you for picking up my books and I appreciate you for tagging me and uh, posting them on Instagram. If you know somebody who could benefit from my kooky little books, let them know. Send them my way. Okay, I am going to fill in a little bit more of this page in silence. The border, I think I'm going to do the border black. So I'll go ahead and uh, disappear for a minute and then I will catch you guys in the next clip. Welcome back. Um, we had a little bit of a, of a disaster over here a few minutes ago. Uh, hi, welcome to my hands for this portion of the video. It is hair dye touch-up day today and uh, I made a boo-boo I had accidentally poured black hair dye into the bowl thinking that it was the dark purple one because I've been doing a split hair thing lately if you've seen my social media you maybe have seen the photos I'm doing my darker purple on the left and my more magenta purple on the right. Uh, and I have I have a bottle of black dye. Also, sometimes when I'm in the mood to do a little bit of a mix. Well, I grabbed the black dye, thinking it was the purple dye, squirted it into the bowl, put it on my hair, realized what I had done in a panic, didn't bother putting gloves on, and just quickly rinsed my hair. And yeah, we had we had a disaster, and I just didn't bother giving myself an acetone alcohol bath to get rid of it. So I have to wash it out. So we're going to get dirty anyway. So yeah, we're going to live with um, purple hands. I promise you I did not murder any creature that has purple blood. I would never do that. So let's get on with the color in chat. We are drinking once again an iced tea today. It is Earl Grey. So let's see, what shall we do? I started working on her, as you can see. I'm not sure if I'm going to want to color her skin in just yet. So let us move on to the foliage. I'm wanting to do uh, a not green foliage, but Should we go green or should we just go obnoxious green? Maybe we should go obnoxious green on this. Let's go for, I grabbed acid green. It's not really acidic looking, is it? But yeah, we'll go for that. We'll be a little bit boring with the foliage and we'll go with green. We'll zhuzh it up a little later with glitter and gel pen and such. But so far, she's looking cute. How far on this am I going to get tonight? I'm not sure because I have quite a bit to do for Coco Naughty. And yeah, I was uh, saving that for later this evening. So we're just going to do a little bit today. This video is definitely going to be filmed over the course of several nights. But yeah, I mean, you guys don't mind, right? I'm just letting you know what's going on. And I, I swear though, you know what? Mm, are we gonna do green? The same green for the rest of the foliage? Our little scully pineapples? I don't know. No, let's go for a brighter, more annoying green. Let's go for, we can alternate the greens. Let's do, how about this? This fluorescent green. Hey, <laughs> it's not very fluorescent on this paper, is it? They almost look the same. I was hoping for a more chartreuse green, but okay, well, I guess all of this foliage is gonna be different shades of, well, this one's looking different now that it's drying, so 
Let's see. Using colors that don't necessarily go together in theory is fun. You all need to try it. I know I've told you a million and one times in the past. You need to try things that are unexpected. I, it has come to my attention lately because somebody recommended to me, they're like, oh, we saw something really cool that you might like, blah, blah, blah. And while I appreciate the suggestion, it wasn't anybody who follows me on my channel or on my social media because I think everybody here knows that I would likely never purchase something like this. But it was, you know, it was a well-intentioned recommendation, which, oh, cool, you know, thanks, I'll check it out, blah, 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 but no, I'm not going to. Um, there's something out there known as a, now I don't know anything about it, uh, aside from the fact that it exists, and I believe the name is called a color cube, color, color cube, right, a color cube. It's a, essentially it's a box set of a ton of different color swatch collections, and People, because I did, even though I, I don't know how long it's been around, I don't know if they update it every year, I have no clue. But essentially, when I did a little poking around on the internet, it's popular with colorists. People purchase this thing and then they base their pages on these pre-made swatch sheets. And it's a cool idea, but also it's a crutch. So I would highly advise those of you who find yourselves being too dependent on crutches not to use a tool like that. But for those of you who can easily jump between doing your own thing and then just wanting to mindlessly grab a swatch and try it out, perfect, it's for you. Because you start running into the territory where you start to become dependent on that and then when you become dependent on being told what to do you lose your free will essentially you you lose your ability to to think outside of the box if you will just indulge me with <laughs> indulge me with the corny sayings right but it's true i mean hell i used to print on the back of my books color outside the lines yeah so i'm, I'm just saying it's a cool idea in theory but just be careful with tools like that it's just I, I equate it to being in the same boat as digital coloring. If you can't color with analog tools, physical art supplies, digital coloring is not going to teach you anything. Digital coloring is fine, enjoy it, but it is also a crutch. So just keep that in mind. Not a bad thing, not inherently a bad thing. It's just everything in moderation, right? That's just how it is. Ice cream is the best thing in the world. At least today. I was craving some ice cream today. Didn't get any, but too much of it, of course, it'll kill you. I mean, anything will, but you know, you get what I'm saying. You get what I'm saying. Uh, her hat. Should we go with a neutral? I pulled out this sienna brown i like the idea of going a little earthy although if we want to go full tropagoth should we pull in some of the blacks black hat black little swimmy suit situation black mm, how about how about we go black hat black shoes gold swimsuit mm? or underwear i mean i don't know what she's doing more power to you she's just sauntering around in her fancy undies sipping from a coconut girl do you more power to you I reached for a sharpie which was not very wise I have better inking markers than sharpies but oh well it is what it is I grabbed the sharpie so let's just use it You all, something is making me want to color her skin pink. Of course, by looking at the thumbnail, you already know whether or not I went that route. But I kind of want to.
pale pink. Yeah. Let's see. Let's grab my Ohuhu pastels. Let's go for Antique Fuchsia. Mm, no, I'm not quite right. There's one just called Pink. Mm, let's see what happens here. That might be hair brighter than what I'm trying to go for. Yeah, that'll match too much with the hair. Maybe not then. Not because I don't want to, but because it doesn't seem as though I have something in my repertoire that will work. Well, that's a bummer. Really? I don't have a baby pink, like a super pale baby pink to believe. Let's see. I, you know, <laughs> oh man, as much as I like to talk crap about that horrible set of markers that I was sent in PR, the Chalky Crowns, I think the Chalky Crowns are going to save my life today. Okay. Yeah, we're... Uh... <laughs> We're gonna we're gonna go with the chalky crowns apparently. I don't even know if this crap brand is still around. But this is I this is what I was looking for, so what can you do? What can you do? Now, uh, should we? No, never mind. I'm just gonna leave her like this. Cute, 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 cute. But what about the scullies? I think I am going to stick with traditional pineapple-y colors for these, for the pineapples. But what about these guys? Are they just going to be big, giant, golden Ralphs? Or should we do something different? Hmm. Coloring conundrums today, just everywhere. What color should we do the skulls? Golden Ralphs would be way too, I mean, way too predictable. We could do Golden Ralphs on her, or at least one in her hair. Have to think about it. Should we do something completely unexpected and go with, oh, gasp, an aqua blue or something? I say it like that because, well, if you know, you know. If you are new to this channel, I don't use blues often, so it's kind of a shocker when I do, but sometimes I just want to. Okay, uh, nah, no on the blues. I'm liking the, the warm color palette that's here. Okay, let's deal with the pineapples and let's get those out of the way since those appear to be dominating my thoughts at the moment. <clears throat> I suppose it will not hurt us to just go pink on these. God, this marker has been getting 
an actual workout lately. It's a Copic Chow. <clears throat> Excuse me. It's a Copic Chow. And I like the Copic Chows. I like the small body of them. I do like the Copic Sketch. Although I will say that of all the markers that I own, I prefer the barrels of the Ohuhus. But I prefer the color selection, I think. Yeah, I prefer the color selection and the color matrix system. It's kind of a matrix. It's um, the numerical system for the markers. I think, uh, yeah, no, I was going to say, I think the Ohuhus are similar, but they're certainly not. The color codes on the Copics, it, there's a method, there's a reason why this is the way that it is, and there's a method to color mixing, color blending with the Copics, which it's technical, I'm not going to get into it in this video, but I like that. These are definitely for a more technical application, and I appreciate that. And But of the Copics, between the sketch, there are three different barrels for the Copics. There are the traditional, which are these. There are the sketch markers, which are the brush tips on one side, the chisel on the other. Those are my favorite. But the barrel size, I think the, the chows are my favorite. I have quite a few chows, and I just they're just smaller. They're round. Uh, I do prefer the round body, as I said. I just, I love the Copic Chows. Now they don't have the Copic Chows, or rather the Copics available. They don't have the Copic Chows available in every color that Copic makes, but for the colors that do exist as a Copic Chow, I will be picking up the Chows. I just, I love, love everything about the Chows. I've never had an issue with the Chows. They're just small, cute, and I love them. Poor Prismacolor just gets no love from me. <laughs> I, the thing is, Prismacolor was my first love as a marker. They're wonderful markers, and I would recommend them to anyone, but... And they last forever. They just, they're well designed. Now, I haven't purchased a Prismacolor marker in many years, and that's, of course, a testament to how good they are, but they last ages. They're just great wonderful or they were workhorse markers but the thing about the Copics is that the refills will get you number one and again that coating system great and uh, yeah they they have the fluorescence that I love so much so I don't know if I would recommend any over the other if you want refills Copics above everything uh, but Ohuhu now, they're expanding their range and they offer refills now, but their just color selection system is just, it's a mess. Their website's terrible, search functionality is awful, but they're getting there. They're getting there. They're really good markers. I love their sets. This pastel set is great, and I, I believe that there's another pastel set that was released semi-recently, and I would like to get my claws on that someday as well because I'll tell you, this set right here, you can pull any three markers out of here, four or five markers, and I swear to you, I don't know what kind of voodoo they're doing, but it's virtually impossible to create an ugly color palette with those colors. It's very well curated, the Ohuhu set. You know what? I was poo-pooing doing so many Ralphs, but what I think we'll do is we will make Ralphs, but we'll do them in a different way. I will go about coloring them in a different method. So instead of doing the traditional Ralph where I just slap gold glitter on it, we're going to make it look glittery with highlighting pens, so white sparkly marks and such. And then we'll put a little bit of gold accent on it. But we'll lay down some yellow and then maybe we'll shade it just a touch. I know I said I wasn't going to shade on this page, but maybe on the Ralphs just a little bit, just to play with that metallic idea. I 
she's cute I love the color palette that's going on down here with this goldy yellowy tanny color and then this light green mm, I like that and then on top of this mulberry blackberry type of color when I put my claws back on I'm gonna see what I have in my arsenal of nail polish maybe we'll do something like that you know what I should start doing when I have my claws on? I should start asking you guys what color I should paint my nails. I should give you guys some options on Instagram and say, hey, pick my nail color this week. Because I do, I'm crazy, and I change my nail polish every week. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Sometimes multiple times a week. Because your girl is obsessed. Let's get that coconut filled in. Okay, I am at the point where I need to, truthfully, I need to wash the hair dye out of my hair. So we are going to leave it here tonight. I actually made do a bit more of this off camera. In fact, it's probably highly likely that's going to happen. So when next you see her, she's going to be filled in a bit more. So until then. And we are back and she's complete. Our lovely little dark, spooky, tropical, tropagoth lovely is all complete. There is a cacophony of sound going on in my apartment right now. The ceiling fan, the air conditioner, the toaster oven. So <laughs> I'm going to try to keep this quick. Oh, and of course the clinkety clinky of ice in my mineral water. So what did I do between last night and tonight besides change my nail polish color? You guys, I'm conflicted. I, I told you, or I've been telling you, or if you been on my channel, you know that I go through periods of removing the claws and allowing the natural claws to grow in, and then I, I start the process all over again, but ah, this color is killing me. I want to see this in my long claws, and my natural ones just cannot grow that quickly. Ugh, ugh, the conflict. Anywho, so much for a brief exit. Uh, yeah, she's done. What I did off camera was simply add in extra line work, put in some highlights, and voila, that's it. We just... Went in with a black pen and with a couple of Jelly Roll Moonlights, and there you go. I hope that you enjoyed hanging out with me, whether you are coloring, cleaning, changing your nail polish, whatever it is that you're doing, I hope that you enjoyed. Uh, do I like this page? Sure, she's cute. I'm even, I'm wearing a dress today. Do you wanna see my dress? This wasn't necessarily planned. Well, it wasn't planned at all, but the thing is, is my life, everything is a reflection of everything that I do. It's kind of wild. So my dress is black. There's a bit of white on it at the top, but it's white and it has that berry color and then this fuchsia e red color or magenta e red. Everything, everything is just like this in my world. And I love it. All right, I'm taking off now. Everything you need to know will always be down below. Follow me on Instagram if you don't already. Instagram seems to be not dying, but I don't know what's going on over there. I'm not sure if it's the algorithm that's making people not enjoy Instagram anymore or if TikTok has completely taken over. I have no idea, but I'm kind of sad about it. I still enjoy Instagram. I do not post 50 times a day, but I do post regularly over there. So I don't know what's going on, but I'm not leaving Instagram. So if you are on Instagram, Follow me over there, let's hang out, and uh, that's going to do it for this video. Be bad, be good, I do not, oh, yep, perfect timing, time to go. That is my lunch. Okay, be bad, be good, I don't give a damn which, just come back in one piece, and I will see you in the next one.